you want to audit it, you can do that too. All right, everybody take your Bibles. And we're going to jump right into the Word. Tonight, there's a famous guest speaker. Lawrence Anna will be here tonight. And I'm going to send you the video. We have a weekly, but I'll send it to you this week. Uh, as long as we have your email address. If you, we, you've not given us your email address, please give it in the lobby and I'll send you the, the weekly because I want to get into the Word right away. But you can also sign up for all these growth groups. I mean, one of them. You can't be in all places at one time. But we have growth groups. Uh, sign up today also, and, and ICA sign up, and Cairo sign up. So what is that? That's our vision of raising you up. Reach, reconcile, raise. 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 We want to raise you up to the next level. That requires discipleship. It requires study. It requires good things. And so head out there, sign up for all those good things, and you will never, ever, ever regret it. Okay, we're in Colossians chapter 3. Holy Spirit, mwah, I love you. You're the best. Help me communicate clearly and help them get it. In Jesus' name. Amen? Yes. All right. Could we read that together? Colossians chapter 3. We are talking about uh, um, <laughs> chicken, chicken. <laughs> I forgot my saying here. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. <laughs> Subtitle, how do you win when the odds are fixed against you? And I really believe God gave me a revelation this week. And it is hot from the throne of God. So let's read Colossians chapter 3 together. Are you ready? Chapter 3, and verse have, 10. And, and have, have been, been clothed, clothed with, with the new man that is being renewed in knowledge according to the image of the one who created it. All together. Here, Here there, there is. is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is all and in all. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with a heart of mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If someone happens to have a complaint against anyone else, just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also forgive others. And, and to, to all, all these, these virtues, virtues add, add love, which is the perfect bond. You can stop right there. This is such a powerful scripture. It says, clothe yourself. Can you hand me this, Fred, please? Um, do you know clothing yourself, the term to undo yourself, to put it on. So I want to change my look right now. And uh, I want to go uh, late chic. I want to go uh, the funk group. Uh, left this in my uh, bathroom in the in the blue room, and uh, so I'm going to put this on. I got the chains. I'm enduing myself right now with something uh, for me to go in and do that funk song. I got to get ready for that, right? So I got the coat. I got the chains. Now I got the glasses. Now I'm ready to do the Holy Spirit funk song, right? I endued myself to prepare myself for that dance and that song. Now what you have to understand is the Bible says the only way you can win in a world that's fixed against you is you must undo yourself. And so I want you to go down with me. There's six points, and I'll get this off very quickly because I don't want to be like that. Um, I, I want to talk about six things, and I, I might get to seven, but I, I might not. But I want you to look at this Colossians chapter 3. And it says, you've clothed yourself to endue with the new man. Everybody say, a new man or a new woman? New man. Someone new say, woman. I'm going to be a new man. I'm going to be a new man. I'm going to be a new woman. I'm going to be a new woman. It doesn't mean going and getting a new wardrobe, although you can try to convince your husband that it's okay. <laughs> Being renewed in the knowledge. Bible says, Romans 12, 1, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. We need to be renewed in what? Here, right here. We need to think differently. We need to have more knowledge. That's why I believe in education. After you get your bachelor's, we'll send you off with Isabel. You can get your license degree in, in Christian counseling, a master's degree. Uh, I, we've got a whole plan for you. Why? Because we want to, to win back our families. We want to win back our cities. We want to win back our schools. That means you're going to have to increase in knowledge. You can't put your head in the sand, and not that you do, but I know other Christians that do. They are against education. 
They don't want to know what's going on. Don't tell me. I've had people say, don't tell me about what's going on in, in, in the world. That's politics. No, it's not politics. It's justice issues. I'm not a politician. I'm a pastor. And I believe that I'm called to speak to you about justice issues. The Bible says the weightier matters of the law are what? Justice and mercy. And one of the things I want to do is your pastor say, okay, let's leave the political side aside. Although if you're called to politics, you better go in. If you're empowered for that kingdom, you need to go in because we need more godly, good leaders. Amen? We'll raise you up as a leader and then go tackle the kingdom of politics. Go for it. I'm talking about justice issues. There are things that are happening in this world right now that it's... it's in a, one, of the, one of the politicians said the other day, um, Fiorino, she was a Hewlett Packard president or CEO. She said, there's so much corruption in Washington. I thought, oh my goodness, you're reading the same newspaper I am. I was kind of encouraged. I'm not saying vote for her. I'm just saying I like what she said. See, there's certain issues that we need to address, and they're justice issues. There's, there's rights. There's things that we need to talk about. But I believe that the game's already been fixed against you. You see, when you go to a casino right now, it's already been literally programmed by a computer to make you lose money. Someone said that on the news just the other day about a new game that they're inventing at UNLV. And uh, the, 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 the announcer said, and, and guess what? It's being designed to build billion dollar casinos. It's true. They're not building these games to win you money. They're building these games to take your money to build whatever. Now, 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 now I'm not an anti-casino guy. They're here in our city and I'm not going to spend Sundays to, to blast them. I'm just saying everybody recognizes that the game's already been fixed. I had someone the other day that lost a bunch of money at a game called Craps. And I said, well, there's a reason it's called Craps. I don't think I've ever heard of anybody that's actually won and kept that money. But I want to let you know that all, Denise, I took Denise on a date uh, Friday night. We went to see the new Mission Impossible movie. Now, the nice thing is about those movies, it's predictable. It's, Cynthia, it's predictable. I know that he's always going to survive. I, I know that... And, and it takes away a little bit of the fear factor about watching a movie. I don't, like, I don't like scary movies. I don't like movies where the heroes get killed. And so it's nice to go to Mission Impossible because I know that he and his whole cast are going to make through to the next Mission Impossible number 34. <laughs> so it's kind of fun to watch him because you have no fear at all because you know he's going to get through no matter what horrible situation he faces. Um, but to see the game's been fixed against you and I in the casinos but also in society. It's fixed. It's, it's fixed in our society. And I, I'm used to things being fixed. You know, of course, if you ever played any sports, I played rugby, and I played football, I played baseball, I played hockey, I played uh, volleyball, actually, high school volleyball. I actually was on the track, uh, track and field team in high school. I, sh I did the shot put. Can you imagine this little guy shooting shot put? Um, I threw the javelin. I threw the discus. Not very far, um, but I, I was involved in all those things. But I can tell you, I remember games where they were completely fixed. I remember the judges, the refs. I remember one place we used to play in Lachine. And it actually, God used this one event to bring healing in me personally. Uh, because I always grew up thinking my dad didn't love me. And so one day we're playing in this place, our team, the Verdun Maple Leafs, we'd won the most games ever of a junior team. We got to Lachine, and some of you have heard this story, so bear with me. So we, 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 we'd we won more games than ever. We showed up in Lachine. But you had to know that the, the refs were always pro Lachine because the fans were pro Lachine and there'd be thousands of people in the stands and uh, there'd be no protection between the players and the fans. So there's no glass or anything. And so all of a sudden the fans started throwing ball bearings at us. So you'd be on the ice or you'd be sitting on your bench and all of a sudden, Pat, you get hit with a ball bearing in your head. Or they'd walk by and go like this. I mean, you're famous, Rachel. You're a famous volleyball, a softball player, right? And, 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 and so I, I, I'll never forget. you. They'd walk by your bench and throw hot coffee on your neck. True story. And so, and then, but, but the players were just as bad because they would spear you, they would butt in you, they would, they would fight you before the, in warm-ups, they'd pick a fight with you. They'd shoot the puck at you and then go attack you. So I, every game was like, you're on nerves. Plus the rest were on their side. 
because it was fixed, right? And so you're there, and you're just knowing you want to get out of their life, and all of a sudden things are getting really raucous. They're, they threw a dead chicken at us. Uh, it just, oh yeah, it was bad. They, they would take broom handles and try to poke you as you skated by. It was really violent. So now I'm like this, sitting on the bench, ready to fight on the ice, or fight in the stands. I knew that I, I, I and all of a sudden I'm like this, on, on it's knowing that, you know, you, I don't know if you've ever been in a situation like that, but I'm ready to defend myself, because I learned how to fight. And so I'm there like just ready to fight either way. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, someone grabs me from behind, and I turn around to hit him. I thought, if you're gonna grab me, you're done. So I, I thought, I'm gonna throw the first punch. It's my dad. And my dad probably went to six, seven games my entire life. Never saw me play. He was always too busy. And I grew up thinking my dad didn't love me. So when I turn around to spin and hit this guy, it's my father. And he leans to my ear and says, Don't worry, Paul. I'm going to get you out of here. I went to my car and I got my tire iron. He was hiding it under his coat. My whole life I thought my dad didn't, lo didn't love me until I was 30 years old and I was teaching from a book called Search for Significance and as clear as day, I never heard God in my ears but my mind, Paul, your dad really loved you. And I'll never forget, I go, God, that's not true. My dad didn't love me. And all of a sudden, I don't know if you've ever had a flashback. I had a flashback that brought me back to when I was 17 years old. And the event when my dad whispered in my ear, I'll get you out of here, son. <sighs> and, and I'll never forget, I had the flashback. I saw it as clear as if I was there. You, I, could, I could smell the bad breath. I could smell, I could see the coffee fly. I, seriously, I, I had a, a very vivid imagination and I brought back 13 years. And all of a sudden, I remember the Lord saying, Paul, he said, my, his rod... And I remembered Psalm 23, my rod and my staff, they comfort you. My father's tire rod comforted me that day. It did. It did. And, I, I, and, and, and the Lord says, Paul, that's the only way he knew how to show he loved you. He was willing to fight about 2,000, 3,000 people to get you out of that building alive. And he wanted to bring you comfort in the only way he knew how. Hey, my dad didn't have a lot of tools of love in his pocket. But defending me and getting me out of that place was his tool that night. And 13 years later, God said, see, your dad did love you. And he showed you in the only way he could. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. You see, we have to realize that we can change a game that's even fixed if we bring a different attitude. We clothe ourselves with the new man. And then verse 12 tells us what it should look like. I never saw that tender side of my dad. My dad was special forces. It was buck up, buddy. Get tough, Goulet. All men bleed red. What's wrong with you? He didn't want to hear feelings. He didn't want to hear weakness. That was my dad. He wanted to make me tough so I could make it through life. But that one day I saw my dad's tenderness. And in verse 12, 12 it says this. Therefore is God's elect. I want you to say with me, God elected me. God elected me. Yeah, I don't know who's going to win in these elections, but I think that these debates are a riot. They're a hoot. I enjoy them. I, I hope we hear them from the Democrats, too. I hope there's a whole bunch of other people that get in the de Democratic race, because I love the different points of view. I think it's very healthy to have debate. How many say amen to that? But you're elected by God. Say with me, I'm elected. In fact, the Bible says you're holy and dearly loved. Say with me, I'm holy and dearly loved. Well, you learned by one sacrifice. Remember, you're holy and dearly loved. You're not some pathetic human being. You're not some person who's supposed to live in guilt all the time. The Bible says He's made you holy and dearly loved. He says you're, you're just perfect right now. You're perfect and you're being made holy. He'll help us with that. Now look at this. Clothe yourself. Again, same word. With a heart of mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. How many families can be healed by more mercy? How many, how many marriages can be healed by more kindness? 
How, how many father son or father daughter relationships can be deal, dealt with by more humility more gentleness and patience how many more people can be won over by love can be won over by this type of attitude I want to tell you, you want to win in a world that's set against you you do this you clothe yourself with these things and and you're going to start seeing a difference in fact, there's one more thing it adds here. Verse 13. Let's read verse 13 together because it's going to add one more thing for us to clothe ourselves with and then we'll get, we'll get some other good stuff. Are you ready for this? Verse 13. Read it together. Bearing with one another. One another. Is it up there? If someone happens to have a complaint. Let's try. Let's, let's start one more time. Are you ready, Susie? Right. Let's, okay, everybody. Bearing, Bearing with, one, with another. one another and forgiving one another. If someone happens to have a complaint against anyone else, just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also forgive others. Hey, one of the first things I have to do to clothe myself with gentleness and humility and all the good stuff I'm supposed to be living is I've got to forgive people. I'll tell you what, I, I read like two papers a day. I'm a speed reader, so I read a lot. And, and I, I, I'm a very, I know what's happening in the news right now. And, I saw last night I, I was at a coffee shop praying and, and finalizing my notes for today and I saw the manager who's Jewish and uh, he walked by and I, I grabbed him and I said please forgive my president for how he's treating Israel Amen. sir please please forgive us and I held him in my arms you say you you do that yeah because see I, I had to forgive our, our leadership right now for how they're treating Israel. I don't know if you saw the article yesterday. Israel is now talking about taking matters in their own hands and dealing with Iran because we're do we've you know we're trying to do a deal with a nation that already has declared its primary goal is to destroy and wipe out Israel and then kill all Americans. They've already said that's their stated goal, and we have a covenant with them. See, I always tell people, you got to be careful who you make covenants with. you, you got to be careful. I, so, so, I, so, so for me to, to remain someone that's a loving, kind person, i got to forget this congressperson and this senator. I had a congressperson the other day from our, no, a senator the other day from our state. Listen to this. He said, if you want to defund Planned Parenthood, you've broken your moral compass. Pat, I was so mad because I still have a little hockey left in me. I still have a little fighter left in me, and I, 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 my initial response is, buddy, I'm gonna, I'm gonna call down hell on you right now. I'm gonna call heaven and hell on you right now. I'm gonna take away your sleep. I'm gonna, I, I, I'm gonna go slash your tire. No, seriously. Initially, there was a flesh reaction. And I, I, and I had to say, okay, Lord, I forgive that man. I forgive him. He's a blind leading the blind. I forgive him in Jesus' name. God, because how can I speak into these people's lives? How can I speak into their life unless I forgive them? Because otherwise I'll be so enraged. Did you know that they want, they don't mind late abortion. In fact, these people, they want to keep abortion until the very minute the baby comes out. Why? Because they can sell the body parts for more. It's true. Gang, say, Pastor, don't talk about this stuff. No, this is justice stuff. I'm not talking politics. This is justice. This is human rights. This is human rights. And I want to tell you, when you read these scriptures, I know that for me to clothe myself with humility and gentleness, I better forgive a lot of people. I better be full of forgiveness because I can't get to step number two unless I forgive them because I'm going to be too angry, too upset. Number two, when you, release, you read Colossians cha chapter 10, chapter 3, it says being clothed with the new man that is being renewed. Everybody say renewed. renewed. That means you could be made new. In the knowledge, remember we're going to increase in knowledge. That's why we're studying. We're getting our bachelor's, our, our master's degree. We're getting our doctorates. We need the knowledge. It's important to get it. That's why we're being mentored and coached by great people. According to the image of the one who created it. Who's that? Jesus. Benjamin, it's Jesus. Lawrence, when you preach tonight, it's all about Jesus. 
Lisa, when, when this ICA, we open the doors in just a, no, another week and a half, it's going to be all about Jesus and His Spirit. And we need to ask ourselves, Jason, what would Jesus do? Yes, we should go back to that. But also, what would Jesus think? What would Jesus feel? What would Jesus say? What would Jesus choose? What would Jesus, I don't know, how would he interpret us? Can I tell you something? If Jesus were, I have to think about this. If Jesus were here physically on earth, how would we feel about the average age of girls in prostitution in our city being 13 years old? How would Jesus, what would he say right now? To the people that are turning their, their eyes away from these little girls that are being caught in sex trade at 13. I'll tell you something really irritating me right now. I'm thinking, how would Jesus feel about Christians right now in the Middle East? Christians and other sex, other Muslim tribes are being taken by these ISIS people and now they're having sex slave markets. I don't know if you read this in the paper yesterday. They found the, the, the leaflets for a child zero to nine years old, sex slave, $165. You can buy a little girl or a little boy for $165 as a sex slave. Okay? 10 to 20 years old, I think it was $134 or $142. Some of you guys read that article. The UN also got that document and they're actually saying this is all true. Okay, now you're 20 to 30. Guess what? There's a blue light special on you. I think it was $86 or $87. 30 to 40, I think it's gone down to $65. I'll tell you what. I, you know, I, I, this is a modern day holocaust. It's one of the worst horror stories I can imagine. What's happening right now in the Middle East. And right now we're more concerned about Caitlyn Jenner than about people that are being sold for $165, top price. I'm thinking, what is wrong with our society? The odds are stacked against people like you and I that actually have morals. People like you and I that actually care about life. People like you and I that actually care about the, the person sitting next to us. Actually caring about our wives or our husbands, about our moms and our dads or our children. What would Jesus do if he was here? He'd throw a holy fit. He'd turn some tables. He'd throw some coins. He'd get pretty ticked off right now. And you know, it's pretty normal that you... And if we're not then maybe we're just too busy being entertained and not busy enough saying, I want to make a difference in my family, in my society. I'm going to stop being so entertained. I'm going to start making a difference. Someone say amen to that. Is it okay that I'm like this with you guys? Can I be honest with you? Because I, I have a fear of God in that one day I will face God face to face. And he'll say, Paul, there's still blood in your hands. You are too much of a coward to confront those issues. I'm not talking about who to elect. That's up to you. I'm talking about issues. And I will talk about issues till the day I die. Because I want to go to heaven with a clear conscience. I want to go to heaven with no blood on my hands. I want to go to heaven and say, Paul, you spoke about it. You, you confronted it. Even when people didn't want to hear it anymore, you still spoke about it. Well done, good and faithful servant. I had a man from India this morning that came to me. He said, you renewed my hope today. He says, because you're attaching relevant issues to the Bible. Thank you. He says, you're giving me hope. He's, he's a man from India. He understands persecution right now. You've read the stories about what's happening to women in, in India right now. There's not equal respect. I believe that if we're going to bring heaven to earth, we need to respect people. We need to honor them. Third principle is enter into a sanctuary. We're going to go back to Hebrews chapter 10. Because last week we talked about this fact that God is doing something powerful in our life. And I just feel by my spirit right now, I want you to get this in your mind. Hebrews chapter 10. And we're just going to read verse 19. Can we read verse 19 of Hebrews 10? Therefore, Therefore brothers and sisters, since, since we, have, we have confidence to enter the sanctuary by the blood of Jesus. Stop right there. This is a sanctuary. It was built by your tithes and your offerings. It was built by faith. It was built by contractors. And this is a great building. We have great buildings around the city and, and to the glory of God. But there is a sanctuary that's a spiritual sanctuary. The real one. And that's His sanctuary. And that gives you access daily as you're in your time of prayer and meditation on the Word. You're coming into the sanctuary of God and you're having an intimate relationship with Him. 
You know what happens when you spend time with people? They say you actually start looking like them and acting like them. You know, one of the funniest things I like is on a Monday is my Sabbath day. And Nancy, I love my Sabbath because I like to look at things that make me laugh. So Dora Saka sends us funny cartoons and I, I look at funny videos. And one, one thing I like to look at is dogs that look like their owners. You ever looked at those? That's hilarious. Hilarious. And, and it's true. I don't know why it's true, but, the, but they look alike sometimes. It's just very humorous. But the other thing they say is, the longer you're married, the more you look like each other. And that's true too. If I want to be more like Jesus, I have to daily spend time with Him in His sanctuary. I need to spend time in meditation on His Word and His presence, and I need to just worship Him. And every day, not just Sundays. Do you know they say the average Christian goes to church once a month? That's not Christianity. That's tradition. Real Christianity should be an intimate relationship with Jesus Christ where I'm being, I'm becoming more like Him. And I'm not there yet. Trust me. I'm definitely still in process. But the third thing is enter your sanctuary. The fourth thing is this. If we want to be clothed with a new attitude, we want to be clothed so we can win even in a game that's fixed, the Bible says to become colorblind. Let's go back to Colossians. Is anybody still listening here? Are you all still here? Is this making sense to you? Because I want to tie our life right now to the Bible. It's got to be relevant, friends. This is not some, some ancient manuscript that was written many years ago. It's, it's the Bible, and it has something to say today. So Colossians chapter 3. Um, l- let's go to verse 11. Colossians 3 verse 11. Can we read it together? Here there is neither nor Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is all and in all. Say, Pastor, you believe in equal rights? You better believe I do. I love what Dr. Carson said on the debate the other day, and I'm not saying, remember, who to vote for. I'm just, there's certain things that people say that I like. He said, uh, I don't think of people as black or white. I, he says, I operate on brains, and all brains are the same color. Can I tell you something? My dad was so anti-prejudice. That's the one thing that could, he would really be ticked off. He'd go, Paul, all men bleed red. Man, we didn't dare hit our sisters. My dad taught us, a woman, a man are equal. Black, white, Hispanic, Asian, doesn't matter. If there was any prejudice that he heard at a dinner table, he would pop a cork. Paul, all men bleed red. My dad told me stories about people in the trenches that he saw killed right next to him. He says, Paul, there's no atheist in a trench hole. He said, Paul, every person in the trench hole is a believer in God. There's no atheists or agnostics. I'm telling you something right now. We've got, if we want to be a winner in this society, you love and honor everybody. You honor everybody. Don't you dare respect, disrespect someone because they're a different color. Don't you dare disrespect them because they have money or they don't have money. Don't you dare disrespect them because they have a high position or a low position in society. Don't you dare disrespect them because they're a woman. Don't you dare disrespect them because they're a senior citizen. I'm telling you something. The other day I was, I was, I had a moment of flesh. Does anybody ever have a moment of flesh? I was in the, they were in the passing lane right in front of me and I started feeling my blood boil because I was going somewhere fast. And this person was going lower than the speed limit in the passing lane. How many can relate to that? How many can give me a good amen? I felt my flesh rise. And I, then I heard my mouth speak. And I said something that was not very complimentary. You knucklehead, get out of the way. The passing lane is for people going faster. And I felt the gentle voice of my master in my brain. Shut up, Paul. They're probably a senior citizen. I'm not kidding. I had an instant rebuke in my brain. And I did something I shouldn't have done, but I passed them on the right side. Don't don't forget you're a senior citizen too. You 
are getting discounts at the theater. And you are getting discounts at Marshall's or Ross on Tuesdays. It's true, it's true, it's true. I cannot tell a lie. <laughs> I just don't look like one because I dye my hair. Oh. Baby, you're the bomb from Donkey Kong. But I drove up and I saw that they were senior citizens and I repented for, I repented for my stupid attitude. Golly. You, you know, you know I, I love our documents that founded this nation, of course the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, the amendments. I, I love it. I love it. I love it. I've been studying it. I've been reading it. Um, and, and, and you know, one, one, one sentence that just kind of blows your mind uh, that uh, we have the right and we should to pursue what? Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And I think to myself, what gives someone the right to take the life of an unborn child? What gives them the right? That up to birth, they, these other people are trying to push for it up to the day of birth. You can take that baby's life. Eight months doesn't matter, nine months doesn't matter. As long as not not more, they're free game. And then let's sell their body parts like a chop shop. Let's sell it to the highest bidder. That makes me sick. That's disgusting. There's justice issues that we should go, everybody has a right. Male, female, Greek, Jew, Gentile, Scythian, it doesn't matter what they are. Everybody has a right, but your rights can't trump, you can't trump life. Your right cannot trump the life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness of another person. You cannot violate their rights. I need to start landing this plane. I want the team to come up here. Number five, what a great scripture. Colossians 3.14. You see, look at this verse 14 here. And to all these virtues add love, which is the crazy glue of life. It says it's the perfect bond here. Not James Bond. The perfect bond. And to all these virtues add love. So when I put all these things, I'm forgiving people, I'm being gentle, humble, I'm trying to get all these things every day in my life. So I put my cloak on, I put my endued with that type of attitude and spirit, and before you know it, it says, oh, and don't forget love. And the word there is, of course, agape, it's unconditional love. <laughs> if that means that people say, well, how could you be married 35 years? It's a long time. Don't you want variety? No. I don't want variety. I found the right one and we're getting pretty good at this thing. You know, I believe in love being crazy glue. God gave us sex, a form of crazy glue. Sometimes it's more crazy than glue. Now people say, I can't believe you said sex. No, remember, the Bible is relevant, friends. This is not some... S justice issues are relevant. The, how you treat someone from a different background or color. Because remember, in Ireland, the Catholics used to kill the Protestants. The Protestants killed the Catholics. And in, in, in Quebec, you, you know what? The French and English, they beat each other up. I got beaten up because I was French. I did. I'd have to run home after school because there was an English school right next to my school. I had to run home every day so I wouldn't get beaten up by that gang again. Just because I was a French person. Not a different color, a different language. What about my two sons, Joseph and Felna? Ask him what it's like to grow up in a nation where short people kill tall people. All prejudice is disgusting. All prejudice is anti-heaven. We have no position for it. In a, and, and if anyone's going to help our, our country come back to that, respect of all human rights. It should be Christians. We should be leading the way and we should do it in a loving way. Because it's the glue. The Bible says that love covers over a multitude of wrongs. Love covers. Here's my last point. Be at peace. Verse 15. I think I understand what's happening with these verses, why people can't read them because they're not broken up. So if we can correct that for next week, that'd be great guys. Verse 15, let the peace of Christ be in control of your hearts. 
for you are in fact called as a body to this peace and be thankful <laughs> you know what really constructs me is that you have a lot of people that preach or a lot of politicians or a lot of other people out there and you could tell they're not at peace they're mad they're 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 just full of garbage and it comes out because whatever's in your heart will come out and then you have Christians that are leaving the city to build bomb shelters because they're afraid of the apocalypse and then you have other people that say let's start killing abortionists oh that'll help just thinking you can't clothe yourself with the same spirit as the world we've got to be different the reason Dr. King had such tremendous success in fighting the civil rights problem is because he was a pacifist. He believed in a non-violent protest. He's one of my personal heroes. But I don't think of him as a black man. I think of him as a brave man. I think of him as a great man that can inspire me to be a better man. I think of him that he said, I've been to the mountain. He went to a place and can I tell you honestly, he said, I may not get there with you guys, but I've been there. And I'm going to tell you something I want you to hear from my heart. Every day I try to function from a place of peace. If I'm all fired up and all angry at the world or all angry at Democrats or Republicans or Libertarians, if I'm angry at everybody, if I'm, if I'm, Jesus wasn't like that. I, I want to come from a place where he's guarding my heart. And Philippians says he guards my heart and mind in Christ Jesus. Are you at peace or are you coming home every day mad? You're coming home every day frustrated and you're coming home every day bitter. If that's you, you need to get back to the peace of Christ guarding your emotions and guarding your mind. I'm not every day there, but honestly, ask yes, my wife, 98% of the time, this man, I function for peace. And I can always tell when someone loses their peace, right Michelle? They kick into the flesh, they kick into resentment and bitterness and anxiety and striving. Instead of saying, I want to go back to my center, my, my place of peace, where Christ is guarding my heart and my mind in Christ Jesus. There it is. Somebody just got that revelation right there. If this message has meant something to you, I want you to stand up right now in front of everybody. Say, Pastor, I, I received the word. It means something to me. We're, we're going to close in a really different way today. But if this word means something to you, you're watching online, I want you, if you're watching online, would you email me or, or text or chat with our chat leader? Would you let us know what this means to you? Because I talked about clothing yourself differently. Yes, the odds are stacked against us in society. Yes, yes, yes. So let's change our uniform. Let's change our way of behaving. And I promise you, you'll start winning more. I promise you. God does not violate His Word. Come back to your place of peace. Come back to love. Come back to forgiveness. Come back to humility. Clothe yourself with this. And I promise you, you're going to start winning more. I promise you. You're going to win family members. You're going to win your marriage back. You're going to win. We're going to win. You're going to win at school. You're going to win in sports. You're going to be humble. You're going to be a contrarian to the society. I promise you. I promise you. I promise you. You might even win an election. Who knows? All things are possible, God. Now, I want you to do this. I want you to close your eyes. Bow your heads. If Jesus is not the Lord of your life, you can make a decision for Him right now. You say, what does that mean, Lord? It means you've received Him as your Savior, but also your Lord. He's your master from now on, and He fills you with His Spirit daily. You can come into a sanctuary because of Him. He invites you to a daily communion, daily peace, daily love, daily forgiveness. It's not once a week. It's daily. That's how you are endued with this thing there it is so I want you to do this if that's you say pastor I want to start living a, a life of peace and love and humility and forgiveness and I want to make sure that Jesus is the Lord of my life stretch out a hand to heaven just wave it right now stretch out a hand stretch out a hand there it is there it is 
you're watching online too and let's pray everybody say Lord Jesus today I want you to save me from myself from this world come and be my master help me be clothed with humility love forgiveness peace let that be my garment every day starting today starting right now come Jesus come fill me and clothe me if you prayed that it's going to happen right now tonight Lawrence is going to bring a word Wednesday night Pasquale and Norma are going to talk about dynamic relationships I fly out tomorrow morning to go see my mom please pray for me she's not doing really well and uh, she's going to be 95 and uh, I need to be next to my my mom she's struggling I love you guys with all my heart I can't imagine loving all of you more so I want you to do this before you go can you turn to one person and tell them the one thing that this message spoke to you the most what's the one thing that jumps out at you go wow I realize I gotta forgive more or I realize I, I need more peace in my life or I realize that I need more humility or or more love I, I don't know what it is turn to one person and tell them or two people and tell them what's the one thing and everybody else will see it tonight at 5 Wednesday night at 7 God bless you have a great day